give. First off, let me say good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all, wherever you are listening to this. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is John Stephen. Today we're going to discuss something which is very close to my heart. Today's subject is the account we all shall give. Think about how important that is to you as an individual. When the time comes to stand before the Lord our God and give an account of our life, whether good or bad, will you be ready? I hope you all realize that this is a warning to us. How we conduct our lives once we accept Yeshua and how we conduct ourselves after we have accepted him will be the most important thing in our account giving. Let's start with the first scripture during this analysis. Luke chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. Luke chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hidden that shall be known. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear of closets shall be proclaimed upon the rooftops. Now that's pretty serious stuff, would you not say? Remember, nothing is going to be hidden from the Lord our God. Every little thing that we have done will be exposed. We are all striving to set a higher example to those out there in the world. How do we strive to do that? By keeping God's word. When we do this, we will move how God wants us to. Remember, not by our doing, but by God's doing. What does that mean, you might ask? By keeping the sin out of our lives. Next scripture, Galatians chapter 3, verses 23, 24, and 25. Galatians chapter 3, verses 23, 24, and 25. And whatsoever you do, do it heartedly as to the Lord and not unto men. You can see here that the Lord is looking at our heart, where it is at with him. This pleases him. For it says, as to the Lord and not unto men. Remember that statement. 24. Ye shall receive the reward of inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. There it is right there, knowing that our God wants and that we serve him. So we shall be rewarded. That's the good news. Let's look at the dangers. 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. It's plain and simple, brothers and sisters. We do not want to end up here. Now, do not get me wrong. This is not going to be easy. I can attest to that as we have and will continuously go through battles to reach the area where God requires us to be. I can concur that I have had many difficult moments. An example of that would be for me as the desire of the flesh, a constant battle between spirit and flesh. But what is better? As the scripture says in Timothy 2, verse 12. Timothy 2, verse 12. If we suffer, we also will reign with him. And that's the light at the end of the tunnel, brothers and sisters. But if we deny him, he will also deny us. Again, the danger is here and I would rather suffer for the glory. Is not any sacrifice that we generally have in our life, whether it be work or personal or family orientated, bring trials and suffering. But at the end of the day, we get through it, don't we? Believe me, I have been there as I'm sure you have. If we overcome, we will reign with him. Keep that in mind, to overcome. John 2, 28. John chapter 2, verse 28. And now, little children, abide in him, meaning to stay with him, that when we shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. From this scripture, we should all realize that it is how we live our lives in Christ and how we prepare our glory for the afterlife. Our glory in the afterlife. What is the meaning of that? The things which we have accomplished on this earth, serving him, keeping on the path that he has prepared for us as his servants. 
John chapter 1 verse 8. John chapter 1 verse 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not the things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. The meaning of wrought is accomplished, but here lies the warning. The possibility of losing those things if we do not keep God in our hearts continuously. You know, many in today's churches say, do not worry, you will always have the glory, or once saved, always saved. But in this previous scripture, the Lord God is warning us that rewards can be given, but then taken away. Revelation 3, verse 11. Revelation 3, verse 11. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Again, Scripture tells us to hold on to what we have, keeping God in our minds and hearts at all times. When we face the Father, whenever that time comes, knowing that we overcame and held on to our crown, albeit crowns as there are many examples, some of these are the incorruptible crown, the crown of righteousness, the crown of glory, the crown of soul saving, the crown of rejoicing, how do we keep our crowns, you might say, by giving our life to the Lord God? Revelation 2, 10. Revelation 2, 10. For none of these things which thou shalt suffer, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried and shall have tribulation ten days. Be then faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Also in Matthew 24, verse 13. Matthew 24, verse 13. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Enduring to the end, always remember that. God has spoken to my heart and yours. That is why I am speaking to you today. And that is why you are listening, because your heart has drawn you. We all belong to God. We are, we are all on a journey to make sure we keep on the path. That is why we are all striving to learn what God wants from us. Now, as Christians who have received the Messiah, we learn that as a Christian, we have to become more Christ-like, which means we have had to grow day by day. Some are still learning, while others reached a point and stopped. Unfortunately for them, they have backslid and are back into the things of sin. Revelation 3.21 Revelation 3.21 To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Remember I said earlier, overcometh. Overcometh what? The sin in our lives. Even as I have overcome. Who is he talking about? Yeshua Jesus. Had every sin tempted upon him, yet he did not sin. Revelation 3.22 Revelation 3, 22. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. This is an important aspect, as it shows to understand God is doing something spiritual through his word to the church. Hearing, praying, reading and seeking God's word helps us to keep sin on the outside of the door. Keeping ourselves out of trouble before we stand before the Father is the thing we should be very clear about. And we will find out who was right and who was wrong anyway. Romans chapter 14, verses 11 through 13. Romans chapter 14, verses 11 through 13. For it is written, As I live, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Then everyone shall give an account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more. But judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. In other words, let's keep things to ourselves. Speaking from experience, I am guilty of this as I am sure many of you out there are too. When these thoughts come into our mind, we must repent of it right away and ask for mercy. Our daily battle within our flesh and spirit is something we all go through. Corinthians chapter 5 Verse 10, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. 
We belong to the Lord whether we are in body or in spirit. We are still his. I'm pretty sure that you all want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, when we stand before the Father. Let's look at some scriptures which coincide with this. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 20. Leviticus chapter 9, chapter 19, verse 20. Be holy, for I am holy, keeping the sin out of our lives. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 40. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 40. Therefore, you shall keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command you today that it may go well with you and with your children after you, and that they may prolong your days in the land that the Lord your God is giving you for all time. Look, if we do this, our Lord God will reward and bless us for all time. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus says to his disciples, if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This is the price we all have to pay. Take up the cross and follow him. Now Yeshua carried that cross. Think of the weight he had to bear. We also have to bear that sacrifice, that weight each day striving for perfection. Again, he that overcometh. Now Yeshua also warns us in Matthew 10, 38. Matthew 10, 38. Anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. For me, that hits home. That scripture brings fear into my spirit. You know, many years ago, I didn't have any fear, already know the Lord, and how I'd be accountable someday. But after being saved and knowing what is required, I cannot, and neither should you go back to how we live our lives previously. Remember what it says in the scripture, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Yeshua gave an account as he paid the ultimate price for our sins. If we are with him, we also have to pay the price. That does not mean we can continuously sin, even if we have received the Messiah. The sad thing is, there is no fear today with many who say they are Christians and carry on with their normal daily lives, not realizing the sin that they are committing, that is all seen by the Father and will be used against them. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Can we not see here that in these two scriptures there are more of what God requires of us? Obedience. At all times, fearing and knowledge are both wisdom and understanding. Discipline here is the key. Think of those who go into the army. They train. They sacrifice, they study for years and years until they reach their goals. That is what we need to do. Each day we need to look into our hearts and ask ourselves the following. Am I pleasing God? Am I doing what he wants? Am I setting an example of his glory? Am I living a righteous life? Is he first before me in everything? I hope that what I have spoken about today has made us all think about the account we all shall give to the Father.